we're going to be talking about how to transfer charge from one object to another via a few different mechanisms. So one is by friction, we're also going to learn how it works with contact, and by induction. But the key thing right here is going to be this, that the charge should be conserved. Okay, so this is one of the most important things. So what we have before should equal what we have after. So let's maybe start off by looking at charging by friction. Now before we do anything else, I'm actually just going to show you a little animation. Uh, let me see here. So this one right here, I love this by PHET, they do great animations here. So without looking at what's going on inside, we're going to look at it later, but let's just say you have a balloon here, you have a shirt here, and you have a wall here. I mean, right now, as I put it close, the balloon isn't really attracted to the shirt. The balloon isn't really attracted to the wall. And yet, I mean, even my daughters know this, if I rub a balloon against a shirt and then I let it go, what happens? Well, the balloon will then be attracted to the shirt. Do you notice if I let it go now, the balloon goes towards the shirt? And sometimes you can even get the balloon to stick to the wall. Watch, if I bring it close enough to the wall, maybe I bring it over here, then it'll stick to the wall. Now what's going on? So we'll try to figure this out here. So maybe I'll just reset the balloon and we'll see. So uh, first of all, I'll just put down this one here and say, let's show all the charges. But let me explain it to you step by step here what happens. So let's say we're rubbing a balloon on a shirt. So here's my shirt, here's the balloon. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, negative charges and I'll count five negative charges over here. It's all about the electrons. Okay, the electrons are the important ones. They're the ones that move. So as you are rubbing this, so as you know you're using friction to sort of go back and forth, you know, as you do this or here, what's going on? You're going to have some of the electrons are going to be flowing this way. Okay, so the electrons are actually going to go that way, some of them. So in the end, maybe you end up with, I don't know, let's say out of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe I have six of them that jump ship. So maybe I've only got one, you know, two, three remaining. So I've got to have my one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the one, two, three, four, five that were there before. So one, two, three, four, and five, let's just say. So look carefully though what's going on here. On this side right here, do you notice right here, it's mostly positively charged? And on this side right here, look at what's going on over here. Over here, it's mostly negatively charged. So because of that, then do you notice that's why the balloon can now, because it's got lots of charges here, it's not made of metal. You know, the balloon's made of rubber, which means the electrons will stay mostly on the side where they were. Same thing with the shirt. And by the way, it depends on what materials you use. I mean, lots of different materials can do different things with as far as how they transfer electrons. For example, uh, sometimes they actually go from one to the other or the other to the one. So it just depends on what you're rubbing against what to find out what's going to happen. But that's beyond what we need for this course, which is good. So we're just going to stick with this that in this case right here, if electrons jumped ship over here and made over here, this becomes negatively charged locally, this becomes positively charged, and remember, opposite charges attract. So that's why it's going to be attracted to the shirt. So do you notice what happens in the end then? This is the pro tip, is that if you charge by friction, the two materials end up with opposite charge. Do you notice that? And if we do this little uh, animation from PHET again, look. Let me show you in detail here what happens. So as I go close and I start rubbing, do you notice then I basically picked up some electrons? So of course when I put it over here, look, the right side of the t-shirt or the shirt is red, so it's mostly positive, and the balloon is mostly negative, so they're gonna attract and quite a bit. But watch what happens over here on this side though. As I go closer to the wall, as I go closer, do you notice though? Because the right side of the balloon is somewhat uh, negatively charged as well, the right side of the balloon is kind of negative or at least it's, uh, the wall is feeling some of the effect you know, of this negatively charged balloon. So you notice as I go closer, I push them away, and as I push them away, hey, the wall becomes slightly positively charged, and then the balloon then will be attracted. Now, it's not nearly as much as the difference here. That's why this one will win. But I think it's a good visual way to represent this. So charging by friction, check. Let's do charging by contact. So here's where you have two materials. So one is initially negative. So let's say this, this one right here, because it's got lots of negative charges. And one of them is uncharged. Let's see why. Because one, two, three, four, we've got five red ones, we've got five blue ones. See, it's uncharged. However, this one here, one, two, three, four, five red ones, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So do you notice then what's happening is I'm going to, as I put this uncharged one right here, as I let them touch, what's going to happen then? Well, then some of the electrons then are able to sort of move over. So in this case right here, some of these electrons, they can actually go that way. OK, 
Okay, so some of the electrons there, they can actually jump ship over there. Now, this one on the left still lost a few electrons, but it's still enough to make it slightly negative, just maybe less so, but this one became negative. So we went from still negative and negative, so notice then, charging by contact, the materials end up with the same charge. So that's interesting, isn't it? That with friction, they end up with opposite charge. By contact, they end up with the same charge. Now you might argue, but wait, by friction, aren't you having contact? Well, yes, but friction is this, this uh, the materials that tend to be insulators or things like that that can still have electrons jump. But if they're conductors, something like that, then that's actually, they're very, very easy. Electrons can easily jump and spread out nicely. So now let's talk about grounding. Sometimes it's called earthing. It's the same thing. This is actually kind of funny because it's literally connecting your object to the ground because the ground acts as a great sort of sink for all of the uh, electrons you want to dump. So for example, um, I mean, this is a true story. I worked in a lab. I was working uh, in a high-tech company um, designing, uh, I was basically, it's called an electro-optic engineer. It's kind of a nerdy job. But uh, my job, it's funny, when I worked in the lab, I had to be connected. So like on my wrist, we had to wear this, uh, you know, ESD, like an electrostatic discharge, like a little bracelet. And that bracelet was then connected literally to the ground, like to a wire that then goes to the ground. And the reason is I don't want to have like a static charge uh, when I'm working on some really, you know, fancy equipment, because if I give it like a, a, you know, a little electrostatic discharge, like a little, tsh, like, you know, you ever had that, you know, if you if it's a really dry day, depending on where you live, sometimes, you know, you can, you can touch, you know, your finger near something that's charged and all of a sudden you get like a little shock, a little spark. That's because electrons jumped across. If I did that to the ma machine, I could sort of kill it and that's not good. So my boss would be mad. So that's why we wore those bracelets. But this is basically what's happening here is this right here. Let's say you've got five of these electrons. When you plug it to the ground, and this is the um, symbol we use for earthing, what happens then is these electrons, so that let's say there's uh, five of them. So one, two, three, four, five, they all move that way into the ground. So that means when you're done, well, then this thing is positively charged. So a fun way to understand grounding, this is an awesome PHET uh, animation. Watch this, it's called John Travolta, it's hilarious. So watch this, so what happens is this, at least in if you live in a climate where it's really dry, like a long time ago I lived in Colorado, for example, in the US, and there, this happened all the time, it was so dry there. So as you're sort of rubbing your foot against, you know, the carpet, for example, you end up gaining a lot of electrons due to friction. Then, of course, what happens is you've got a lot of electra, uh, extra electrons. I, mean, I like how they show them as John Travolta. But watch, as you put your finger closer to the door, of course, what's going to happen is then they can essentially be grounded or earthed, and, you know, so that way these charges can then go down somewhere. So, of course, then you would get a shock. You'd be like, ow. That's actually kind of funny. And I think actually on this one they've actually got cool sound effects. Let's see if we can hear it. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> But there you go. But it does accurately show these electrons build up and then they flow through there because they've been grounded or earthed. So now let's look at charging by induction because we're going to need this idea of grounding or earthing. So for example, let's say we start off uh, with a sphere. Okay, we've got a sphere here. It's initially uncharged. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six you know, electrons on it, for example. And this is a little rod that's got, uh, let's say, five electrons in it and it's negatively charged, okay? So what's happening is this, where induction means you're not going to let them touch. So you take this one right here and you move it close. So imagine that you put it close by. Well, what's going to happen then is uh, these electrons then, I mean, they don't really want to be nearby, so they're going to move, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to try to draw like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, because they're repelled by this. Well, then what happens then is as you then ground it, so remember they're repelled, they want to move away. So as you ground it, what happens? Well, this one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, they can flow out of there. And because they flow out of there, now they're gone. So, and of course, what you do then is you then remove the rod. And in the end, what do you have? You have a negative rod and a positive sphere. So charging by induction leads them to have opposite charge as well. Isn't that interesting? So this is something that you may want to know about for exams. So to see, we've learned these three different methods of charging, right? You can charge by friction, by contact, by induction. We've also learned about grounding or earthing that allows these electrons to be dumped into the ground if you need to.